Hi guys, it's Desi and Jiggy, and you're inside Desi's Crochet Cubby. We're on the floor today. I decided to do something a little bit different. Some of you who follow me know that I have a hamburger box. I've talked about it before in the past, probably several times. Um, it's where I keep and have kept all my important letters and just little this and that through the year. That's the things that are really important to me. And I, I'm even keeping them up to this very day. And the latest one was um, the little note that Wendy uh, put in my happy mail. <laughs> and that was my last video. But uh, what I got planned for today is a little bit different. Um, I'm going to set him down. He sees the blanket and he's like wanting to get cozy. And I got a cozy look here going on. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, so I don't know if you can see it. Let me see. I've got my big bedspread that I had crocheted. And in one of my videos, I had said that I was going to frog it and make cakes out of it. Well, it's been sitting there and it's still in its full form, mostly. So my plans are to take that apart and while I'm doing that I want to go through some of the stuff and share it with you that's in my hamburger box. Um, I'm not quite sure how much we'll get through and then maybe perhaps we can go in the other room when I'm done and we can cake up a little bit of it. But I do need to give you a little bit of a backdrop um, concerning my childhood. I have to because some of this in here pertains to that. So, okay, so when I was little, um, let's see, there's five siblings that I have, and mom and dad were together, and I think up until the point maybe when I was in second grade, they had divorced, and uh, the family was split all apart. I mean, I don't know, the boys were here, my sister got married at 16, I think, and she left, and my other sister was with me, and we went and lived with my mom and my stepfather. That's a whole big story right there about my stepfather. But the boys had gone, went back and forth a few times from to dads to moms to dads, you know, whatever. My brother was actually put in a foster home because of my stepfather. Um, it was a very difficult life with my stepfather. Um, most of the time that I can remember, well, I'll go back a little bit. Um, I think the best years in my childhood were um, second grade and before, but that's excluding the part where my dad was a violent alcoholic. Now, as long as I scooted out of the house without being seen, I had a terrific childhood, childhood up until that point. <clears throat> I got to go out and play with my friends and do things that kids normally do. Uh, for the most part. Well, once mom and dad had broken up, and like I said, the family was just all over the place. Um, I remember having to go to the courthouse and they actually, the judge actually, I can't believe this, but actually had us kids pick sides. We went into a room privately and we had to tell them who we wanted to live with. And it really didn't matter. I don't even know why they put us through that. That was very hard on us because we were afraid that we were going to hurt one or the other of the parents, you know, if they found out who we decided to live with. But anyway, uh, my sister ended up with me, with my mom and my stepdad. Like I said, my sister Val, she had gotten married. She got out of it. She got married at 16. Um, and my brother's for the most part, lived with my dad until my, later on, my brother, I won't mention names, my one brother uh, was put into foster care. <clears throat> Actually, uh, that wasn't such a bad thing, you know, because he had a better life there, I think. Uh, but my stepfather, if you, I don't know how much I can say on YouTube, but just know in your mind that there are different kinds of A, B, U, S, E, and there was all of them in my household. <clears throat> that being said, um, we didn't get to live like normal kids. We were not allowed 
to go and play with the neighbors. We weren't allowed to go anywhere on school functions. We weren't, e we weren't allowed to leave our yard. Um, for the most part, we stayed in the house, and I was terrified of my stepfather. Um, it was just horrible. You were always, always, always on edge. Um, so all of that, I mean, I, there's so much I could say, so, so much. But this really isn't the place for it. I don't want to bring you guys down. The point of it is, is just in case we run into some things that any of these letters might pertain to my childhood, you'll get a little bit of a picture. Um, so, let me see, it was like 10th grade. I decided I had had enough. I could not take any more. I just could not take any more. Uh, so instead of going into foster care, um, my mom allowed me to go and find a place to live. Um, <clears throat> so I did that, and it didn't turn out to be just one place to live. I started, I was hopping from place to place to place. And being a teenager, I mean kids, they need structure, just basically, they need structure. I did not have structure. Um, each household I went into, I thought I was doing the right thing, and it turned out for that household, I was doing the wrong thing. So, once again, I was on edge. <laughs> I'm telling you what. I think I lived in like six different households from 10th grade until my graduation. And um, my stepfather, when I was living with him up to the 10th grade, from second grade up to 10th grade, um, he did not allow us to see our dad. Uh, I think mom just kind of went along with it, but, uh, so I did not see my dad. Oh, I don't know, maybe I seen my dad a couple times on courthouse visits once, once I went to live with my mom and my stepfather, but that was abruptly put to an end. Um, so, like I said, I finally left, like I said, in 10th grade, and I moved all around, and then I graduated. Well, since I didn't get to see my dad all that time, I had decided I was going to move in with my dad after graduation. That turned out to be <clears throat> not as good as I thought it was going to be, because up until that point, dad was still drinking. So I had some pretty terrifying things happening there, too. So you might as well say, I was on edge pretty much all my life pretty much all my life and you guys don't even know I mean this is a smidge um, yeah so I ended up uh, living with dad I think for a year um, I was seeing uh, this guy which he ended up being my husband later uh, he was my first husband and he is the father to my two children so, like, after graduation, I lived with Dad, and then I ended up getting pregnant to this man that ended up being my husband, like, I don't know, six months down the road or something. I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, so, I was married to him. Oh, I'm trying to even remember. I think we got divorced in, what, what year was it? 98, 1998. Um, and, and, uh, and then I had, I was, I started in on this chat called ICQ, and, uh, I was, uh, chatting back and forth to my now husband, <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, there's a whole big story, and I think I'll save that for another video, um, I'll let Hubby Cubby, you know, be in, in it with me and tell a story about how we met through the internet, you know, that was pretty cool. You know, we lived six hours apart, but uh, we ended up getting together, and here we are today. Um, we've been married since 2004, and now it's 2024. So that's just a piece, a piece of what, you know, from childhood up to now, <laughs> a very quick piece. But I thought that you guys should know a little bit about my background. So, okay, let's get into the yarn here. I'm going to back you up a little bit and let me see. Hang on a second so I can get this to go back on. It keeps shutting off. I don't know why. I'm going to get a drink because all that talking made me thirsty. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to show you real quick here this yarn right here. It's in a tub. 
and I'm going to be pulling out of it. So I'm not sure how much you'll be able to see. I'm hoping you can see enough. Okay, and then remember, this is my hamburger box. So I'm going to be pulling some yarn apart here. Try to take this out a little bit because it is really big. Okay, smells just a little bit musty. <laughs> Not musty, but you know what I mean. When you put something in a tub for a little while and then you take the lid off. All right, I'm going to let that sit there for a second. Buddy, you got to move. He's in my way. All right, let's take a little bit out of this here. Um, this <laughs> this here was the cover. Uh, my stuff from Juan the Yarn Addict. This is what his my yarn from him came in, and I just decided to keep it. Um, I'm going to put that off to the side. This here is uh, the note that I got from Wendy, the subscriber who sent me my happy mail in my last video. I read that to you guys, but... Uh, I'll read it again. Okay. Hi, Desi. I immediately thought of you when gifting this book. She gave, she uh, sent me a book, a pattern book. I recently purchased it for myself, and after reviewing it, I said, nope, not, not for me. Too much sewing. I love all the details you add to your amis, and if you decide to make one from the book, it will be perfection. Your dragon was gorgeous. I so enjoy your channel and your appreciation for all things. This is a universal colloquialism. I can't pronounce that word. She put laugh out loud. I look forward to your next makes. All the best with your channel. That was from Wendy. Wendy from Virginia. And I told you, Wendy, I was going to put it in my hamburger box. This here is a note from... Nancy over at She's Got Yarn 2. And it says, note from my favorite podcaster. She says, Desi, I hope you have a lot of fun with the yarn I picked. She had sent me um, a mystery yarn box full of yarn. And I did a video on that. And that's from She's Got Yarn 2. Nancy. There you go. Let's take a little bit of yarn apart here, too, while we're talking about stuff. set my stuff off to the side as I show you guys. All right, take a little bit of this apart here for a second. Yeah, I thought I would do something a little bit different. This is going to be a little bit difficult to get apart, I think. I don't know. Yeah, so not the same old, same old. Thought I'd share a little bit of some things with you guys so you can get to know me a little bit better as we go along. Um, I don't even know. I think it might be two years that I'm into YouTube so far. Not certain, but I think it is. Or at least dang close to it. I have to check. I don't know. But i got lots and lots of videos, and I hope that you guys are checking some of my older videos out. That would really help me, because they need to get have some love. <laughs> they definitely need some love. The numbers are not as big as I would like them to be. But that being said, I would like to thank all of you who have become my subscribers. Um, that is really important. And thumbs ups. Thumbs up, guys. Please remember to give me thumbs up. Yep. I'll share uh, some stuff here in a second, but I want to ball this up a little bit. I think what I'm going to do is cut some of the yellow away from the other colors because I didn't do that in the beginning and I kind of wish that I had. Um, you would not believe how much yarn is in this blanket. It just didn't, I don't know, it just didn't turn out what I wanted so I think I've got something else in mind, something else in view. So let me get this yellow at least off of here, and then, and then I'll share some more stuff with you guys. I got you won't believe how much is in that. This used to be like a hamburger box. I don't know if you if you go back years and years, like back to 1985, some of the stores had boxes where they kept. I don't know if they still do this or not, but they had bigger boxes that they. 
kept uh, frozen patties of hamburger in. And my dad is the one who gave me the idea of doing this because he kept his letters and stuff inside of a hamburger box. And I, I seen that one day. Uh, he had opened up his closet and I was like, what's that? And then he told me and he says, I can get one for you if you want. And that's what started it. But I had kept stuff before that. I just, I think I was keeping it in a bag or something like that, whatever. And I was like, yeah, I need some, somewhere to put my stuff and this would be perfect. And uh, so, I don't know if I had one or two of those, whatever. But I eventually grew out of that hamburger box and I had to get a bigger box. And so I just kept the name Hamburger Box and uh, just decided to keep calling it my hamburger box. And uh, that's a fond memory for, for me about my dad because, oh, and I forgot to tell you guys that it was like, I, I did tell you that my dad was a violent alcoholic. And when I went to live with him after I graduated that one year, I think it was five, maybe five more years he was still drinking and then he quit because I had the family all come together and we did an intervention. And actually we thought that he was going to be inebriated that day when the guy showed up from the place that was helping us out with that. Um, but actually, nope, it was the day that dad was sober and he actually was glad he told he told us that he he was glad that we were intervening and it went well and he he went without a problem they took him and uh, he got dried out and i think my brother wes was the only one that really had a lot of faith that dad was actually going to stop drinking dad did stop drinking and i had a good relationship a close relationship with him for 10 years and then he passed away and it was because of the alcoholism it was because of emphysema from smoking um, very sad yeah he had something that was called saint vitus dance i don't know if anybody's ever heard of that out there in my friends uh my subscribers my friends my lurkers whatever here on youtube on my channel on desi's crochet cubby um saint vitus dance was some type of a neurological thing um, and it would cause dad to constantly be under anxiety and it would cause him to I don't know like make his foot toes go up all the time his legs bouncing around you just I don't know sort of sort of I guess you would call it almost like ticks you know what I mean um, yeah so anyway, he he said that he he I think he told my mom that he he drank because he he couldn't stand how he was uh, having to deal with that Saint Vitus dance, uh, not being uh, having some kind of something to to kind of take the edge off for him, I guess. And then, as you know, when you drink. Uh, that long your body gets addicted and bad things happen and dad was just not the type of person that could drink that's all i mean he was a completely different person anyway um, i guess that's what happened i mean he had something happen too i i, mean, I don't know the whole complete story but he had a brother and i guess maybe when they were in their teenage years they were out on a boat fishing and uh, I don't know the complete story, but his brother ended up falling over the boat. Dad didn't know how to swim. He couldn't save him. And uh, his brother, my uncle, died. And uh, I think Dad had probably maybe blamed himself, you know, because he couldn't swim and save him. I don't know. That's, that's just my thoughts. And maybe that was part of the issue because I guess it he, he was even drinking in his teen years, so, I don't know, sad story, sad, sad story. <laughs> I don't know why I keep going to sad stories. I guess there's a lot of stuff, you know. It's just life. We can't all be roses, or right? We can't, excuse me, it can't all be rosy. That's just not the way it goes. Uh, 
I gotta cut the yellow because we ended the yellow and then we'll get into some letters here or whatever I have in there see just this just that like uh, two rows this much yarn I got out of that that's a lot this blanket was supposed to go to my daughter and her husband but like I said I, I want to do something different I just I don't know I changed my mind put it that way okay now this year <laughs> my daughter's uh, kiddos my grandkids when they were a little younger well long time ago <laughs> they're like uh, 18 and or 17 and 19 years old now so this is quite a long time ago but uh, is this it yeah one of the kids or two of the kids I don't know made me something and I feel really bad it wasn't my fault but I put it up I put it up on the shelf and I had a cat at that time and the cat decided to go up there and start nosing around knocked it off the shelf so it's all in pieces now this was my grandson oh, it got it got scratched up but this was probably about the age that they made it I don't know but that that's my grandson um, he's like 19 19 or 20 now I'm not sure but he may have been the one that made this but it was for grandma me it was for grandma but it's in pieces and it stinks that it's in pieces oh, yeah it says Jamie on it so sad lots of little pieces here I don't know I can't show you because it's in so many pieces I don't know I think it was 2007 we got an 007 on here it was for grandma and grandpa I don't know I don't know but it was a plate and it's it was for Christmas and the kids made it and I was so mad when the cat knocked it off but I kept it all these years <laughs> it's a piece of it for grandma and grandpa from Jamie and Luxie so I just I keep all kinds of things I told you I felt bad I was gonna glue that sometime but I think there's just way too many pieces too many pieces yeah the mama wasn't too happy <laughs> that that was broken into pieces yeah and I felt embarrassed that it was broken but there was my sweet grandbabies all that time long time ago and now I got two more to to uh, their mama <laughs> two more grandbabies that are young yep Hildy and Soren and I talk about them sometimes and I actually made this dog for Soren that's for Soren so that's why I'm making the uh, make ahead Christmas stuff partly for, partly for them mostly for them this is my son this was a while ago that was a while ago I got that and this was him oh he was such a cutie he was a wrestler for a little while wasn't he cute oh my goodness so 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 cute good looking boy yep that's my Justin 1997 what a cutie yeah <laughs> that's my boy all right what else do we got here lots and lots and lots of stuff what can I share with you oh here's my daughter when she was born 
I even kept that. Yep, right after she was born. That's my Jasmine. And I love that name that I picked. I actually had put names in a hat. Um, I couldn't decide what to name her, so it was either Natasha or Jasmine. Um, I, can't, I think that was the only two. I think it was. But I put it in a hat, and then Jasmine came out, the name Jasmine. And then I put in a hat how to spell it, because it had I, I spelled it J-A-S-Z-M-I-N. Yep, my cuties right there way back when. Yep, that was uh, 1988. So cute. This was me in between when I had my first marriage and then when I was with now my hubby cubby, I had a boyfriend. He was a jerk. But anyway, this was his house, and I was carving pumpkins at that time. I don't know what year that was. That was probably 1998, 99, something like that. Yeah. What's this? what this is. I guess me and uh, my first husband had given my mom a Mother's Day card, especially for you. You can tell it's pretty old. Really old. Warmest wishes because you're very special on Mother's Day. If your Mother's Day is, a lo is as lovely as roses in bloom and as bright as a morning in spring, if it fills you with warmth and surrounds you with friends and the pleasures you hope it will bring. If you find that your day is brimming with joy and your dreams all begin to come true, then your Mother's Day will be just the kind you deserve, the kind wished especially for you. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Whoops. I don't know if you can see that or not. But that was for my mama. I took some of the stuff back when she passed. So, yeah, I do have a sad story about my mom. I don't know. I, I carry it with me. I've carried it with me for years. You guys know I just told you that my upbringing was really rough with mom and my stepdad. Not because of my mom, but because of my stepdad. And I had harbored a lot of stuff inside. I was quiet at home, and I kept everything in. And, uh... After I had graduated and after I had lived with my dad for that year and then I got married to my first husband, I, I had gotten inebriated one night and I decided to write a note that was very, 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 very hurtful. I let out everything that was inside of me, the, of all the things that I had gone through, all the anger came out in this letter. And it was directed at my mom. And it had cuss words in there and all kinds of stuff. And I feel feel bad, and I felt bad about it. Um, but I had forgotten about it. I had forgotten about it all those years. And what I didn't realize is my mom had kept that in her heart and in her mind all of those years. So I had wrote that in back in... 1985, 1985, and then my mom passed in, I think she passed in 2012 or 2013, something like that, but it was like a year before she had passed, maybe even less than that, before she had passed, I was at my sister's, and my mom and I were upstairs, everybody was downstairs, and my mom was pretty ill, I mean, she was really declining bad mentally and physically, and uh, we were talking, and I thought everything was going fine. And then she said something that was targeted about that letter, and I had no idea what she was talking about. No idea. And then all of a sudden, wham, it hit me. And I said to her, 
Oh, that letter. I am so, so, so sorry. I told her that I was inebriated, and she said I figured. But she held that in her heart all those years. And, uh, yeah. It just made me so sad. It made me so sad. And then when she passed, I still held that in my heart, and I cried about it. I cried about it a lot. I am doing this here. Um, yep. And I even prayed, and I, I would pray to God, and I'd say, please tell my mama <laughs> that I'm sorry. And then I wouldn't leave it there. I'd keep praying about it, and I'd say the same thing. But I have no way to vent. I have no way to to ever really express how what a horrible thing that was for me to do and you know I just wish I could take it back but I can't I can't and even at her funeral when I went up to her casket I bent down and I was crying over her and uh, I told her I was sorry yeah that was rough. I mean, but you got to kind of understand, I went through a lot. And I, I was still a teenager at the time that I wrote that, being a teenager, and then on top of that, you know, drinking. I mean, it wasn't just a little. It was a lot. And my husband at that time said, are you sure you want to mail that? I don't think you should mail that. You're going to be sorry. I remember him saying that. To this day, I remember him saying that. And guess what? <laughs> he was right. But we'll get off that subject. It was just something I wanted to share with you guys. Hope you don't mind. Yeah, we'll get into some nicer stuff here. It's just a lot of things, you know. Like I said, life isn't always rosy. You can't, you can't just constantly be positive because that is not realistic. You know, we all go through things. And I want to share things with you guys, if you don't mind. Yeah. Wind up a little bit of yarn while I'm at it and share a little bit of good stuff and share a little bit of icky stuff and whoops. Yep. Uh, maybe I'll get some of this done. Later, I want to, um, I want to, not on this video, but I want to get online. And I was going, my husband was going to take me to Joanne's the other day so I could spend that card that, you know, the Joanne card that Wendy got me. But, oh my gosh, I was so fatigued. I actually went to sleep the night before, slept that whole night, and then I told my husband, I, I'm, I'm way, way, way too tired. I, I'm not feeling well. I'm exhausted. I need to sleep. And I ended up sleeping the entire day. Uh, I think I got up one hour, and that was like 8 o'clock at night, and then I slept the whole night again. So that's how tired I was. So I didn't get to go to Joanne's, but what I want to do, I think, I think I want to go online and see what they got. Um, I was thinking maybe that I wanted to do Bod Bag of Days show, but then when I seen her uh, video about it and she was talking about the kind of yarns that you can use. It's the yarns that I don't have. And uh, I, if I'm going to do something like that, I want to get the more expensive yarns. Because um, she was talking about natural fi fibers would be best. And I really don't have the natural fibers. Uh, so I don't know. So I think basically what I want to get with the Joann's card is that book that I showed in my last video that Wendy, my, my friend, my subscriber, had sent me, uh, the knotted amigurumi. Um, I want to get yarn for that because I really enjoy, it's my love, my passion is the amigurumi. Um, so I'm thinking I'll probably get yarns for that. And what is it? Oh, I can't remember what kind of yarn. It's like plushy yarn, bulky yarn um, is what you get for that. And I don't have any right now, so I think I'll look for that. And I like bulky yarn, and I think I only have 
maybe one or two skeins of that. And I'd really like to stock up on some bulky yarns. I, I like bulky yarns. I started out on bulky yarns. I think I did. Yeah. Yeah. So, I want to do a video. I don't know. I don't know if you'd be interested with me showing you what I'm buying online. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Would you be interested in something like that? Okay, so I'm going to set that ball aside. Let's see what else we can get into here. Let's see what we got. <laughs> do any of you guys do this with your children or have done this with your children? Save little things. This was my daughter's, and you can tell by the envelope. It's a really old envelope. <laughs> this is Jasmine's... Um, I don't know if it was brownies or Girl Scouts or something. I'm not sure. Oh, Girl Scout membership stars and badges and stuff. I kept them. I should give them to her. I think I told her about them. And then I just forgot to give them to her. I really should give them to her. But when my time comes, all this stuff that my kids will be going through it, I'm sure. She'll find it. <laughs> Can you believe it? I got some 45 records. This one, oh no, it got broken. It says, uh, it's you, the four, I can't read it. The four preps, I don't even know what that is. And then I got The Long Ships Part 1, Charles Albertine. I don't know. Maybe these were my dad's because I, I, don't, I don't recognize those. Oh, old 45s. Any of you got 45s saved up? And then I got, uh, back when I went to cosmetology school, remember I told you in one of my videos, I said that I went six months out of the nine months it was required. This was a letter... Uh, that they sent me for cosmetology in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. And I kept it it's super old. The paper is all yellowed. It says, Pennsylvania Academy of Cosmetology, Arts, and Sciences. It is a pleasure to inform you that your application for admission at, at Pennsylvania Academy of Ecology Cosmetology, Arts, and Sciences has been accepted. Based on your interest and aptitude... <laughs> We feel confident that you will enjoy your classes um, here, and your training will prove to be an excellent foundation for a rewarding career if you have any questions, blah, blah, blah. So that was my acceptance letter. I was 18 years old, I believe, at the time. <laughs> and you want to hear something funny. Being 18 years old, I had no idea that whenever you went in for your interview, it was supposed to be just you. <laughs> I took my best friend and my sister-in-law, same person, and she went in with me. And it was kind of funny because when I was being interviewed, the lady was like, you know, people usually just come in by themselves when they get interviewed. And I said, yeah, but I'm nervous. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's, that's being a teenager and, and not being told these things when you're growing up, how life works. So I kept that. That was important to me. Even though I did not graduate because I ended up pregnant and I didn't want to be around the chemicals being pregnant. There was other people there that were pregnant and, you know, they finished school, they graduated. But I just felt that if I did that and I was around the chemicals, something might happen to my baby. And I wanted my baby to be healthy. So I, I took my baby over my career at the time. And if you want to see my dad and my mom, my dad and my mom are by my fingers. Hopefully you can see that good enough. Okay, the gray-haired man. <laughs> they weren't married at the time. They just were, they came together so that we could have pictures. And right there was my first husband, John. Right there. And, uh, of course, that was me in the purple right there and uh, my two kiddos down here there and there 
Yep. I got my brother off to the side and then his daughter right there and right there. So I don't know if you guys can see that. I hope so. Okay. Lots of pictures, lots of letters, all kinds of stuff here. Um, what's this? <laughs> I even have my 11th grade, uh, what do you want to call this, uh, senior high school report card. Yeah, I was doing better in that grade because I was told to buckle up or I wasn't going to graduate. So, yeah, it says, be sure enough credits are scheduled next year. <laughs> yeah, I was getting C's and B's, and that was a lot better than what I used to get before that, that's for sure. So that was my high school report. Um, <laughs> me and my daughter, long time ago. She liked to do the crazy hair. And then I got a, a letter, or I mean a card, from an old boyfriend. Luckiest thing that ever happened to me was you. Little Care Bears. And then it says, uh, Love, here's a little card to let you know how I feel about you. Hope you like it, because I do, and I love you. Also, I thought the bears were kind of cute. You are too. I don't know what else to say, except that I love you a lot, and always will. Your favorite boyfriend. Better be your only one. Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah, and what's really weird, this was, uh, what was it? This was in high school, I think, that he gave this to me. But what's really weird is after that, I had a boyfriend, like, out of high school, um, before my first husband. His nickname was, nickname was Possum. And he got me a card pretty much exactly the same. It, it, that's weird, because these two never seen each other, didn't know about this card. Possum didn't know about the card. It was so strange. If I could find it, I'll show you. That was weird. Very strange. Oh, I better wind up some more yarn, huh, guys? Uh, I'm chatting away. <laughs> I'm kind of really enjoying this. I hope you guys are. Other than being saying some sad stuff, I, I don't want to be a downer. I just, I want to share. I want you guys to know some things about me, and I, I really hope you don't mind. Let me know in the comments if it's okay, you know, that I'm not constantly just saying happy stuff. I mean, I got to say what I got to say. Well, that's life. A lot of things happened that were bad, you know. I didn't have that perfect childhood. My husband pretty much had that perfect childhood. I, like I said a long time ago when I was doing a video, him and I were doing a video, a Christmas one, and he was telling you guys, we were sitting at the kitchen table. You can watch that if you want. But, uh, yeah, he was telling you guys about his childhood, and I'm telling you, he had the perfect childhood. And I said, I wish I had your childhood, <laughs> and I meant it. I really meant it. Man, he had horses and all kinds of stuff. And just, I mean, if you want to know about his childhood, watch that video. It's, uh, I think the, the uh, what's it called, the thumbnail is of him and I sitting at the kitchen table, and I believe I have a mandala blanket that I'm working on. If you want to watch that, I can't remember what I entitled it, but... Then you'll find out a little bit about his wonderful childhood. I'm telling you what, that would have been fantastic. But you know what? Even though I had a crappy childhood, I think I turned out pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I went through a lot of bumps after, after high school and when I was out on my own and stuff. I had to learn a lot. I made a lot of mistakes, did a lot of things I regret. Um, I think a lot of it was because I had pent-up anger, you know, and it just had nowhere to direct it. And so I went through a lot of bumps along the way. But now I'm in my 50s, almost 60, and uh, I still have my hurts, you know. I still have stuff that stays with me, but I'm not going through what I used to go through and doing all the stuff that 
you really shouldn't do. <laughs> no, I think I got my wits about me more than these days. But, yeah. So I got a little bit more wound up there. What else do we got? You want me to read you a letter? Here's something my son made me when he was a kid. The monster under the bed. He comes at night for a midnight fright to scare the children. He just might. Exactly when you start to assume, you find out. It's just a broom. <laughs> he made that. It's made out of wood. And he shellacked it. It looks, it looks like, see how shiny it is? That's cool. And I believe he made that up right there, too. I don't remember what age he was, but he was young. From my son, Justin. Yep. What else do we got here? Oh, here's my dad. He was a helicopter mechanic in the Army. I want to try to get this so you can see it. But anyway, that was my dad. He's inside the helicopter. He used to work on these hel on the helicopters in the Army. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he got in trouble a lot in the Army. He had, he had to do a lot of peeling potatoes. That's what they did when they got in trouble. That was my dad. And so here's my mom, her brothers, and her sister. And uh, my brother's uh, daughter way down at the bottom. But my mom's right here. She was a very, very skinny woman. Yep. She sure loved her sisters, her sister and her brothers. They were pretty close. Yeah. Aunt Shirley, Uncle Bill, Uncle Rex. The only one that's missing out of there is Uncle Jess. So she had three brothers. Yep. And there's me. Uh... I went to, uh, oh, what was it? I went to Cambria Rao Business College, and there's a picture of me. I don't know how well you can see that. Yep, I think I was like 21 years old or something there. I don't know. I hope you guys are enjoying this, sharing my life with you sharing a lot of my life with you. I'm probably going to have to do this again because there's way too much to share. <laughs> this is back when I was in 7th grade, 7th or 8th grade, um, and I was given a Polaroid for Christmas, and I'm the girl on top strangling my best friend, <laughs> or my friend. <laughs> Not really strangling her. We were pretending. Yeah, we were just goofing around. We were just goofing. Jiggy, no barking. What else do I got? Oh, this is me and my daughter at my daughter's graduation here. Um, college. Jiggy, no barking, baby. Shush. All right, let's ball up a little bit more yarn here. I got to back up. Okay. Let me know if you guys are enjoying this kind of thing, please, in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed, I hope you'll consider subscribing. I am like I was telling you, I don't normally do videos this way, but why not break it up? Do something different for a change. I mean, isn't it a little bit cozy here? All right, I'll wind that up. So that's that for this ball. We got two balls wound up. I don't know that we're going to get to, you know, putting them on and caking them up this time. Because I don't want to have the video being way, way, way too long. Here's a letter from my dad. I got lots of letters from my dad. But this here, my daughter went into the, uh, to the army for a short while. And then she ended up getting pregnant. <laughs> and then she was no longer in the army. But it says, hey, uh, Mom and, and Ken, 
Just saying hi. I don't have a return address, but I'll write you back when I get one. Can't wait to get this done. Seems like forever. Well, I'll talk to you later. Love you, Jasmine. And this is from Fort Leonard Wood. Greetings from Fort Leonard Wood. So my daughter was in the Army for a little bit. Let's see what my dad had to say. This was, I was living with my uncle, so I had to have been, I was in 10th grade, so I had to have been 15, 16 years old. That was one of the many places that I lived at. This was the very first place that I lived at after I left mom and my stepdad. So, dad writes, Okay, this is 1983. The roads down here are in good shape now, and I should have a new starter by Monday the 14th, and we will be right up to see you all just as soon as I get it fixed. See, he, he would write about anything, because he really didn't know what to write about, because Dad didn't have much of a life, you know. He was pretty much a, a what do they call that, um... Uh, when you when you stay in your home and you just don't go anywhere. I can't remember what it's called. See you soon, darling. As ever and always, love and kisses, Dad. Thought I'd share that with you guys. That's my dad. He's passed. He's, he passed away in 2000. So all of his letters are very, very special to me. Like I said, he was a... He stayed in his home all the time. And he didn't have much to talk about, so he talked about what he could. You know? It's still very, very special to me. I gotta change my battery. I didn't get a whole, whole lot of winding up, did I? <laughs> Done. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you like this kind of video, and I'll do them again, and I'll share a lot more stuff with you. If you like it, please let me know. I need to know. I need that feedback. Um, well, in my... From 7th grade to 12th grade, I had, like, four, four best friends that I hung out with. But two were really especially close. And the one always hung out with me. And his name was Don. Uh, I had a male friend. And uh, he makes me, Juan, the yarn addict, makes me think of Don, my friend. He was my friend back then, anyway. But through 7th grade to 12th grade, we were friends, and then we kept in contact through letters. Uh, here's one of them. Um, so this letter here is a letter I was living with my dad. Remember I said that after I graduated, I went to live with my real dad. And uh, so Dawn had wrote me a letter, and I'll read that to you. But I'm going to tell you something. All those years... You know, I was I was a pretty wild child in, I, in school. Uh, I used school as my social outlet because I wasn't allowed to have a social life other than that. I was pretty much doing using school as the place to just really let go. <laughs> to really hang out and let loose. And uh, so nobody would have known that I was a believer in God. I believed in God ever since I was a child. I was praying to God even when I was a child. But I guess Dawn didn't know that. I never thought to bring it up. Because I wasn't living the life of a Christian. I mean, why would I bring it up? Well, I'm not talking about this letter back then. This letter was back in 19, probably 85. But I'm talking about, like, a couple years right this moment. I tried to get back in contact with Don on Facebook. And then when he found out that I believe in God, that I'm saved through the blood of Jesus Christ, he don't want anything to do with me anymore. He's, and he told me something that was very hurtful. He said, if I would have known back in school that you believed in God, we never would have been friends. Can you believe that? So he cut contact off with me on Facebook. Very sad. I don't know. I don't know. But I'll read you this letter here in a second. I want to wind this up. And the, the green, <laughs> it has a 
a knot in it, so I'm going to have to try to get that out. That's why I cut it, and I'm just doing this little bit of a ball right here. But I'm going to use these sessions. If you don't, if you like this kind of video, and we do it again, I'm going to use these sessions to work on this blanket because I know I won't work on it any other time if I don't. But this letter from Don, back in probably 1985. This is a very short one. It says, Hi, what's new with you? Sorry I haven't written sooner. How are you doing? Great, I hope. I'm making it. Did I tell you I quit college? Well, I did. I saw your sister up at Riverside. That's a super, that was a supermarket the other day, and she told me you were getting married, and you didn't even write to tell me about it. How is, well, the reason I didn't write to tell him about it was because I was in a relationship <laughs> that was going to be my husband, my first husband, and the one that I was pregnant to. Uh, so I didn't think that he would really appreciate me conversing back and forth with another guy. I didn't know, so I don't know. Uh, how's cosmetology school coming along? Not too much is going on with me. I watch TV or listen to the radio because I don't have a job. I wish I could find one. How are Shauna, that's who I was talking about, is my best friend and my sister-in-law at the same time. So how are Shauna and Billy, Billy's my brother, uh, getting along? Did they find a house or a trailer yet? The only thing I do is go skating he was big into roller skating on Sunday nights, and sometimes I don't have the money to go. Do you think you could make it down to Indiana sometime so we could see each other? I can ask my dad if I could take you back. He probably will let me have the car, so I could. Uh, how far is Seward, Seward, PA from Indiana? Well, I can't think of anything else to talk about, so I'll let you go. Take care, love, Dawn. Right back soon. I don't know. I don't know if I wrote after that or not, but I don't know. Some of his letters really got strange. So, I don't know. Our relationship was dwindling. Things were happening in life, you know, so. So that friendship's over. And, geez, all those years from 7th grade to 12th grade. And now he says, I never would have been friends with you. And that hurts because we were really good friends. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to let you guys go because this, this was kind of long. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. We'll do it again. It's All right. Time. It's time for some snips, some shells, and weaving in them darn your toes. See you later, guys. I love you. Bye-bye.